Hello everyone. This is Nadia Abu Hassan, Dr. A, and I'm Dr. Joanna Dawson, Dr. B. Today is episode 9 of the podcast that we started together called Ask Doctors A and B. We started this podcast because places we go or people that know we are dentists, they come to us with dental questions. And now that they know we have a business too, they also ask us questions about business. You know, so we love to add value and we decided to add value to you too. And we would like to answer your questions. You just leave us a comment or send us a DM and we're gonna answer your question. Today, we're gonna talk about, go ahead and say it. Yeah, so in today's video, it's gonna be common myths and everything that we hear all the time because people come to us saying that, oh, I heard this, or so-and-so told me this, mm -hmm. and we're here to give you the real deal answers on some of these common myths that people tell us all the time. I know, so you guys know how myths start, right? It's the grandmother that told the daughter, that told the son, that told the wife, and everybody's talking about it, but you know what, there are, there's the, like, we're gonna debunk all those myths and tell you the real deal right in here today. And if there's any myth that you heard and you'd like us to talk about it, Go ahead and leave us a comment. Yep. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and you like so that you never miss when I do post a new video, okay? So let's start. Our first myth that we hear a lot is whitening damages your teeth or your enamel. If you like you know it's bleaching teeth, I know if you guys do that, if whitening your teeth, if it's gonna damage your teeth or your enamel. So, you know, a lot of people think that the more you do it, the more you're gonna ruin your teeth. And in reality, you know, there are side effects to it, which is sensitivity, but it doesn't really ruin permanently your enamel. It stays the same, and you can go ahead and say why. Yeah, so <laughs> if you look at the, you know, the chemical and then what is actually happening to your teeth when you're whitening, um, the peroxide will basically bind to the stain particles in your teeth. Imagine your teeth like a big honeycomb. There's like pores all over it. And so mm -hmm. the whitening product will basically bind to those stains that have blocked those tubules, mm -hmm. causing stain, and they pull it out. So the enamel, the matrix that actually makes up your teeth, is actually untouched. Um, so there's no actual permanent damage to your teeth. Yes, but, but of right. course there are like some side effects. So a lot of people yep. get sensitivity from, you know, whitening their teeth. So what we recommend in order to decrease the side effects, like, you know, to fight the fight effect, the side effects is you can use a toothpaste that is a desensitizer, like a sense for sensitive teeth. Mm -hmm. You use it two weeks before you start bleaching, that can help. And also, if you come to our clinic, we have two kinds of bleach. One that we do that is in-house, it's stronger, it gets the teeth, you know, it has to be done with a professional because of uh, like it's a, it's a lot stronger bleach than the one that you take home. In that case, sometimes we also give you the varnish to take home, which is fluoride that helps with sensitivity. We give some stuff that will help you with the side effects. But you know, bleaching your teeth is fine and it's gonna make you look happier because your teeth are gonna look white and bright and pretty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's all good. <laughs> yep, and the other thing that has killed us recently and I don't know how many friends, you know, texted me and was like, oh, look, see, I don't have to do this anymore. This whole time you told me I had to do it. Um, and it's this article that came out saying flossing is bad for you. I know. Okay, flossing is not bad for you. You can go ahead and put a caption in <laughs> The thing is that, you know, there are things that can help. So when you're brushing your teeth, you know, the physical action of brushing your teeth, removing the plaque, you can get with the bristles of the toothbrush in between your teeth is not going to get in mm -hmm. and you know your gum the way it is it needs to get clean in between your teeth otherwise all this bacteria that is in there is gonna you know cause a lot of damage to your gum and to your teeth and that's bacteria that stays days after day so if you want to do this oh i floss but it's occasionally remember that all this bacteria in between your teeth are not being cleaned with just the toothbrush so you gotta use the toothbrush, you floss. One thing that could help some people, they're like, okay, I don't wanna floss every day, I wanna use a water pick and a floss. So maybe if you alternate, I can see the value right there, but, but brushing does not do the job of flossing. Yeah. And the water pick itself doesn't do the work of the flossing or the brushing, it's a combination. The more you do, the better. But flossing and water pick, they kinda go towards the gum. And they, the water can go in between your teeth and take away 
some of the bacteria out there. So that's yeah. very helpful. Yeah. If you like, if you like this new, um, you know, it's called water pick. You should totally try it. Yeah. It's really, really cool. great for patients who have difficult time flossing too. If they have like um, Bridge. bridges or your kiddos who are doing braces, this will help oh, clean yeah. out in between all the wires. So mm -hmm. much easier. Yes. yes. Yep. And Waterpick just came out with a new uh, tool that is basically, I don't know if you've seen this yet, it's an electric toothbrush with the Waterpick in it. So you can do both at the same time. Like oh. for those of you who are like, oh, it takes too much time in my day. You can do both at once now. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that help, but what you cannot do is not do any of this. Like you know, you're gonna have to physically go and remove all this bacteria from your teeth. Very important mm -hmm. for your gum, for your oral health. So that article that said that floss has no value is not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And yeah. So so myth number three, we hear from parents a lot that oh well those are just the baby teeth, so why does it matter? I don't I shouldn't have to fix it because they're gonna fall out anyways. I know, and if it has a cavity, it's gonna fall out anyways. Few things in here to talk about about those baby teeth. One, baby teeth are not in your mouth alone, right? As you're growing, you start getting adult teeth in the mouth. So let's suppose, you know, I'm not saying that, let's suppose baby teeth were not important. Cavity is a disease, is a bacteria that transfers. So while your adult teeth are coming and your baby teeth are in your mouth, the adult teeth, which is the permanent teeth, are gonna get infected with the bacteria. So that's a no bueno. You cannot let your adult teeth get cavities, you know? But there's a second thing. Baby teeth, you know, people are saying, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna fall off at the age of six. Just a few come out at that age. Mm -hmm. Some of them at the age of seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Like you have all this time, you can't just go with no teeth yeah. in the mouth. Yeah. That's two. Or some people don't even have a permanent underneath. So that baby teeth is their permanent. Yeah, well, sometimes, yeah. And then the third one that is really, really important too, you want those baby teeth because they save space for the adult teeth. It, because if you lose a baby tooth, the teeth on the sides are gonna sort of shift and then it's gonna close the space. And when the permanent teeth are gonna come out, there's not gonna be a space. It's gonna be like this, there's not gonna be space. Yes, you can fix it with braces. There's a lot more consequence than just fixing the baby teeth. And most important than anything, cavity is a disease and it can cause infection. You do not want your child with an infection. It's dangerous, it's painful, and it's not good. So we gotta fix those baby teeth for many different reasons as you see. Like if you didn't get convinced of the first one, there's two or three or four, there's a lot of reasons. We gotta fix those baby teeth. So yes, sometimes the doctor decides that the tooth is about to fall out and there's no, you know, there's nothing happening on the side that the doctor has to examine and evaluate. Cause you probably have heard that the doctor said, hey, leave it, it's fine, it's about to fall out. So that's a decision that can be taken by a professional. But I would totally recommend you take your kid to the doctor and they make the decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And then number four, this pertains to patients who have surgery or an extraction um, and they have a history of smoking. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things that you know kill us when patients come in after surgery is uh, dry socket. So oh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about what dry socket is and then we can talk about the myth. Sorry. Um, yes, uh, sure. So. You know, once you extract the teeth, a, a clot, it's gonna, it's like if you fall, you're gonna form that little scab, right? That, mm -hmm. in, in your skin. And it's black on the skin, right? In the mouth, it's the same thing that forms. It's a clot that forms the scab, but it looks white. The reason it looks white is because in the mouth, there's saliva. It's wet all the time, so it's gonna look white. So a lot of people that look at that are like, oh my God, what's going on? It's normal. Mm -hmm. The one thing is that little, Claw, the the oh, cover yeah. that, that forms after you take a tooth out, it's really important to stay there because this is how you heal it. If it comes out, it exposes the bone. And if the bone gets exposed, it's called dry socket. Yes. Are you gonna hurts. die from it? No, but it hurts a lot. Yep. <laughs> you do not wanna feel that kind of pain. You know, there's things that you can do that, you know, to minimize the pain, however, it's, it's not a cool pain and people like, you know, oh my God, I was already feeling better. It's the third day and now I'm feeling a lot of pain again. A lot of the time it can be a dry socket. So in order to avoid it, 
you know, you're not supposed to do anything to remove that cloth. So what makes it remove the cloth? It's back. It's back pressure, right? Mm -hmm. There you yeah, go. Like yeah. anything pressure that changes. Pressure it's changes and how do you do that? Exactly. Blowing your nose. Exactly. Blowing your nose. Yeah, you do, do this. Like motion with the straw. Second, second the straw. And so some people come and say, I smoked cigarette, but I covered it. It's yeah. not the smoke that removes the clot and causes a dry socket. It's the action of smoking. So if you smoke, you did the action of smoking. So it doesn't matter how much you cover, the clock can come out. So, you know, it's not about the smoke that goes on, you know, on the, on the healing yeah. site. Yep. It's not about that. Yep. It's about the back suction and the pressure that it's doing that they can remove it. Yeah. And yeah, this so is it. Yeah, basically anything that will delay healing. Like spitting. Yeah, like if you wash anything. your mouth, you don't spit, don't do the pressure, you just let the water exactly. get out. Yep. So anything that you know will delay healing, even some medical conditions, you know, all these things are gonna put you at high risk for dry socket. So, yes. you know, it's, it's not fun, it hurts, and mm -hmm. you basically just have to wait it out. Um, so we really advise patients to just not smoke mm -hmm. All together all. during healing. Yeah. Don't smoke while at all. Yeah. for a few weeks. Just don't do it. Better to not smoke at all. Yes. All the time, yes. buddy. <laughs> um, okay, so the last thing for today's myth um, is this whole concept of, you know, people like to do mouthwash because it tastes good and everything. It feels good, nice and fresh afterwards. And they commonly say, oh, well, I do mouthwash, so isn't that good enough? Yeah, because mouthwash is antibacterial, right? They eat it in the little thing. It says it's antibacterial. So I'm cleaning the bacteria in my mouth with a mouthwash. However, the mouthwash doesn't remove the plaque. No, the bacteria is very smart. They and don't they just float it. around and no, let you no, no, no. rinse it off. You may rinse a few of them, but hey, there are a lot of them still on there. Yes, they're so really stinky. If you want to clean them, you have to physically get a toothbrush, get toothpaste, and go on and on. And it's not that fast. The two minutes needs to be there because you can't skip a tooth and skip a spot like the tooth has to be cleaned all the way around it's not like just here and here or just, you know that 20 seconds doesn't do the work too mm -hmm. so mouthwash is not going to remove all the bacteria especially the plaque it's very sticky and the plaque is where bacteria like to get there and it's, it gets sticky in there mm -hmm. and stays it's almost like a house right so you got to break that house stop that party every day and and then you know a lot of people say yeah i use mouthwash many times a day still doesn't do it you know it, you gotta brush your teeth two times a day if you really want to get all this bacteria i mean all this plaque out that's the only way that you can do it and then after that if you want to use the mouthwash hey the more you remove the bacteria the better Mm -hmm. there's no ocd in this yep. matter the more you do it we're not going to be against it yep yep so we hope that these five little debunked myths will help you guys at your next party with your friends and you can tell them, hey, that's actually not true. This is what's really true. Yeah, so, and I'm sure that you guys have heard other myths as well. And if you want us to talk about it, leave us a comment. And by the way, stay tuned because the next episode, we're going to come with five more myths that we have in here selected for you. So I hope you guys like the episode today of Last Doctors A&D. Until next time, be boundless.